Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm so glad you're with us today. Oh, my dear friends, I have had considerable trouble just believing in psychic or spiritual mediums. I'm, I mean, think about it. These people are mind reading with dead people and mind reading with a living person is hard enough. I've had dozens, actually, dozens and dozens of readings because I've been trying to understand the process, understand the whole phenomenon and Frankly, most of them have been pretty poor. I've I've had readings in all price ranges. I've spent a, a, over a thousand dollars on one medium once, and I thought he did a very poor job. I've also though had some very good readings, so I know it works. And when it works, it really works. So, um, even though I even though I try, I really have never gotten over this whole mind reading with the dead problem. And, but we do have a few friends of Seek Reality who are successful working mediums, and they have a lot to tell us about this aspect of afterlife studies that is, I think, far too little understood, especially, of course, by me. One such dear friend is Carolyn Molnar. She is with us today for the third time with a compelling new memoir that details her background in doing this work and also gives us some great tips if you're an aspiring medium, this is your, your show. You'll be glad to hear what she has to tell you about that. And if you're someone who wants to try a medium and you're wondering how you can tell what's, who's a good one, who's not, she'll talk about that too. So we have a lot to talk about today. Carolyn Molnar has more than 30 years of experience in the field of mediumship, working with clients worldwide. She also teaches classes on mediumship and on overall psychic development, and she has led workshops across Canada, which is her home country, and at Lilydale, New York. She was featured on Vice TV's television series, Mr. Tachyon, Do Humans Have a Sixth Sense? And I think we have more than six, but we'll talk about that too. Carolyn and her, and her work have been referenced in, in books that include psychics and mediums in Canada, and also Medium 7, Evidence of the Afterlife and Predictions. She's been profiled in various newspapers in Canada, including the Toronto Star, the National Post, and the Globe and Mail. And readers of the North York Mirror newspaper have voted her their favorite psychic. Carolyn also wrote, produced, and directed a one-woman play called What? You're a Medium? at the Toronto Fringe Theatre Festival. And now she's out with her second book, just out, also called What? You're a Medium? This is Carolyn Molnar's third visit to Seek Reality. She's always such a delight. Carolyn, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad to be with you again, Roberta. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is going to be fun. Um, it's going to be fun because my hope is I will take out of today some things that I really want to learn. So I, I want to teach other people, but you know me, I'm just, I'm just a bear for learning. And this is an area where I really have been too dilatory in what I've tried to learn. So, but first, Carolyn, can you tell us a little about your history, just briefly, because some people, even though you, this is your third visit here, some people may not have heard you before. Where do I start? Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, that's always a problem. Yeah, just, I, I, just, it just was, briefly, it, I mean, you talk about it in your book, but mm -hmm. you you sort of had, had experiences even when you were very young, right? And yes. you resisted being a medium. Um, I I recall that as well. Yes, I I believe I was five years old when I started telling my mother stuff that she'd ask about. She wouldn't believe me, but it all came true, and it it just came went from there. At eight. I had a visit uh, from um, 12 energies that surrounded my bed oh, while yeah. I was sick. Tell that and, story. I think that's a beautiful story. <laughs> well, <laughs> my mother always said, Carolyn, when you get sick, you look so sick. And so <laughs> she <laughs> go to bed is her, her favorite phrase when uh -huh. I was feeling under the weather. And I did. I went to bed. And I was eight years old at the time, and I was a melodramatic young lady. I was known as Sarah Hartburn, which was short for Sarah Bernhardt. <laughs> right. Yeah, because I was quite the actress. 
That's funny. And so yeah. I got to bed. I put my hands over my chest like I thought I was in a coffin and said, okay, take me now. I'm just so sick. Uh-huh. I had a head cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, being, being dramatic is that is not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> Wait, you were eight. When I had my experience yeah. of light, I was eight as well. And I'm wondering mm-hmm. about the significance of that mm-hmm. in, in, term, in spiritual terms. But go ahead. So I'm lying in bed, and the door to my bedroom opened and shut with a click 12 times. And with my eyes closed, I could feel 12 columns of light surrounding my bed. And with that, I fell asleep, woke up after a long winter's nap, and I was well. And my attitude was, I guess they still want me to be here because <laughs> I'm so, well again. I, but it- but who, now, who are you saying those beings? Because they were beings, clearly. Yes, who, they, they were my guides. They, they were wow. my guides. Mm-hmm. It, so so they talked to you about it later. Yes, we were there. Yes, we yeah. healed you. Oh, my yeah. goodness. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, and then fast forward to age 16, I had my first reading. And I remember coming out of her office thinking, wow, that's amazing. I wonder if I can do that. Well, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and That's then true. fast forward it to 20, and that was when I had the reading from, well, not a great reading. It scared the pants off me. And that's oh, yeah. all mentioned in my book. Any, a long story short, I was so frightened, I called my father, and I asked him for help. And he says, oh, I'll take you to my psychic. And I went, what? My psychic? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that, right. And so I met Sadie Nickerson, who was a reverend in the spiritualist church. Uh, she didn't know me from Adam. I sat in front of her at her kitchen arborite table, and I burst into tears. And she just looked at me, took my hands, and said, okay, let's start again. And she yeah, gave right. me a reading. And she trained me for 20 years. That's I, From the negativity that I received with one, I received what I needed in my lifetime to be able to do what I do. So I have been very fortunate to have had such a wonderful uh, teacher, this this bad experience that you had, yes, and, and mm-hmm. you talk at length about Sadie and about mm-hmm. other things she taught you, which I thought was quite beautiful. It's wonderful when we can find someone who is truly a, a soul friend and is able to mentor us and bring us along just perfectly. I I just thought that was a beautiful story, but. But let's talk about this bad reading. Um, mm. One of the things that we all need to worry about is the power that someone c- can try to take over us just by telling us negative things about our lives. Let's exactly. start. Let's start there. All right. Yeah. So well, I some, learned a lot from that. Oh, you you went to a medium, everybody, everyone. Imagine that. And then mm-hmm. you talk about what happened when when you went to your first reading. Well, my sister went first and she went downstairs everything seemed to be fine you know it was just a regular day and then she came upstairs and her eyes were as wide as saucers and I went "Uh uh-oh and then I was taken down into this rec room and she proceeded to start telling me things and then things got weird um you remember rabbit ears on a television Uh those wire things they started scratching the wall oh the candle started acting up and I'm looking around going, what is going on here? And she's saying, this has never happened to me before in the midst of, you know, giving me these weird messages. And um, I realized later on someone was trying to get me out of there, someone being from the spirit world. Right. And the reason it was so, uh, was so horrid was it was so negative. And she was telling me stuff that was... Um, you know, could have really affected my life. Uh, That's true. She was true. talking about children. She was talking about my husband to be, and it was not good. It was not good at all. And that's that. I have learned so much from that reading. I will never give a negative reading to anybody who comes to see me. I have been taught that it's all about hope and help, and to leave them in a better place than when they came to see me. You, but so. you were told that your husband to be was going to mm-hmm. cheat on you, which he never did, mm-hmm. right? Never did. And nope. and and b- bad things were going to happen with your children, which never yep. happened, right? Yeah, they were supposed to go to jail. Never happened. Oh, mm-hmm. No. Now I'm going to tell you. Um, this lady was very well known in her community, and she worked for the police. 
and she worked extensively with them. So I think some of that rubbed off on her. Oh, all right. You know? Yeah, yeah. She was well, very well known. But th- but this is a very important point, everyone. If you go to a, a medium, say someone that you love has died and, and now you want to go. And by the way, no one ever dies, which is why I'm so cheerful saying that. But but you, you'd like to see if you can be in contact. You go to a medium mm-hmm. and you hear these negative things. Stand up, walk away, or hang exactly. up the phone. Because exactly. no responsible medium will ever tell you anything negative. That's one of the things I have learned. And why won't mm-hmm. they? I, and I've talked to a lot of mediums. We've interviewed them here. And they all say this. Um, sometimes I will say be careful about this day or be careful about, you know, this friend or something. But they won't tell you uh, that somebody's about to murder you. They won't tell you those things. Am I right mm-hmm. about that? Because that's what others yeah. have told me. Well, here's one of the ones that really gets me is when a uh, medium will say your your loved one's stuck. In other words, they're oh, not in yeah. heaven and they're not on earth. They're just stuck. It's That's not true. Um, and all, sometimes what happens is um, a medium that is not well trained will feel experiences from the spirit person. Say, for instance, they had a heart attack and, you know, the heart, the medium feels that the heart's heavy. She may or he may interpret it as, you know, they're sad, they're, they're mournful, they're, they're stuck. And it's more like, no, they had a heart attack. That's how they yes. passed. Here's yes. some evidence. Move on. Yep. So it's all about interpretation as well. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Can you, can you tell us what mediumship is? How would you define it? Okay, well, there's a difference between psychic work and mediumship. Psychic work is about the here and now, love life, finances, you know, am I going to get the job, am I moving, that kind of thing. But mediumship is only talking to dead people. That's it. Nothing okay. else. You don't talk to your guides. You talk to the people who have passed the spirit. Okay. Now, we, but you you could also, if there was a guide there, um, I know this because of that's how I initially met my my guide. It's, it's possible for a medium to be in contact with your guide as well, right? I believe they would be psychic mediums. In other words, they are in touch with your guy your guides as well as those who are in spirit. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I know it's a bit technical, but you know. Yes. Well, you got to have your own jargon and stuff, of yeah. course, in your field. <laughs> But uh, so that so simply put, then everyone, true mediumship is talking to to dead loved ones, basically yeah. talking to people, and they have to have a connection with you, right? So that if I went in, went to a medium and I said, "Hey, I've always had a big crush on you know I don't know uh, John Lennon. I want to talk to John Lennon. I I have no connection with him. I, you aren't going to be able to find him for me, right?" Well, it's interesting that you mentioned John Lennon because oh, no. he, is a, he is a busy person. <laughs> yes, and I, tell yeah. us the story. But, but. Oh, no, I'm not going there because then he'll be bugging me all all night long. No, I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh <my laughs> He's very goodness. active. Let me just say that. He is very active because he was such a spiritual person and he wants yes. peace on earth. So he's working on the other side to, to make that happen. But um, let me just say this. <laughs> oh. Um, I've had experiences where uh, people from spirit, uh, spirit people come to me and they just stare at me. And I'm thinking, uh oh. And then I got to the point where I realized that is a clue. They're, uh, they're very shy. They don't like to talk or this is a whole new experience and they didn't believe it when they were here and now they're here. What are they going to do with it? Oh, so everything means something. Everything. You just oh, have to know wow. how to interpret it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's very dynamic. Very. It's like talking to people, except they're not in their physical form anymore. Is it easier to mind read with dead people than with living people? I don't mind read. Well, what um, is I am doing? Yeah, then? I'm at the mercy of the spirit person. So, oh. say for instance. They come in and they just stare at me and they are not willing to say anything or they don't even want to come. I'm lost. If they're not there to talk with me, I'll say, you know what? I can bring somebody else in, but it just seems to me as though your mom is just not interested today. Give her a minute. Maybe she'll come. 
but I think Uncle Joe really wants to talk to you. Oh, well, uh, yeah, he was such a crazy person. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and okay. Sometimes what happens is there's a gatekeeper of the spirit world. Like, the, like say, Dad was the one that, you know, would accumulate people in a house and or, you know, have parties, that kind of thing. He'll be the one to start bringing people in. So if I don't pay attention to Dad, the rest of them will wait because he's not having it. <laughs> you know? They have their personality. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I've noticed that, too, with my own relatives. Part of my problem is it's been – I. There's no one I've been close to who has died for many, many years, and it was much easier 20 years ago to to hear from them mm-hmm. when it was especially my I was I was doing most of this work when my um, brother-in-law had just recently died, and he was mm-hmm. the you're right he was the ringleader of all of it. He brought the people in. He <laughs> okay. He was he showed up every time, and what I discovered mm-hmm. too, if you decide you're going to test ten mediums in two months. They have something else to say about it. By the time I had even been through half of them, nobody was showing up except Jerry. He always came, but he he was bored too. I could tell, and he he didn't want to do it anymore either. They're like people. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I had a guy who who had booked like months in advance with me, but thought he'd have a little reading a, a week ahead. Now I have read for him before. His family came through in you know living color. They were not talking to me. I said, what's going on here? I know your family. Why are they doing Well, I kind of had a reading last week. I said, well, do you think that they have anything new to say in a week's time? Yes, right? isn't that amazing? <laughs> I thought they would just line up in a row each time. And, of course, they're, of course, they're people. And, yep. and they were pretty bored and disgusted in the end. The best <laughs> reading I got when I did these 20 readings, readings in three months, the best reading I got was from the very first person who read me. And you know, she wasn't famous. She wasn't expensive. She just happened to be the first one. And I got a fantastic reading from this woman no one's ever heard of mm-hmm. because she was the first. After well, that, I, from then yeah. on, half the people showed up for a couple more times. And after that, they didn't want to bother. Well, I tell my clients, don't see me for another six months unless there's something very unusual because yeah. it's the same thing. Let some time go by so that they have something to talk about when um, when we meet again. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Why is it possible that all of this happens? Have you thought about what the mechanism is that makes this work? And if you don't, if you haven't, I'm still trying to understand it too. Um, it's your brain and your central nervous system. There are three glands in the brain that um, react. Like uh, we, on average, only use about 10% of our brain. So there's the other 90% that we can use for other purposes. I happen to use mine for mediumship and psychic work. And also it's your central nervous system as well, as well as your heart area. So there are actual physiological things going on in your body um, to to be able to touch in with the spirit world. That's why I don't, I don't do a lot of readings in a week because I just want to preserve my energy to be able to do this for a long time. It, it, it can be quite taxing. But, of course, for my brother-in-law, Jerry, who had recently passed into spirit, he doesn't have a central nervous system. No, what I is do. It? Right. So you're <laughs> saying that he appears, uh, that his, his mind, his, his spirit, attaches to your central nervous system and makes that possible that way? Um, he uses my, uh, my psychic senses, which is sight, hearing, um, feeling, taste, and scent. So he'll, he'll, and my brain reacts to that. It's like a whole thing going on here. So um, that's how it works in, in, without getting too complicated about it. And these spirit know uh, what sense is best that they can use in order for them to get the message across. So sometimes I will uh, see things like a movie, you know, I'll say, what is the apple pie about? Apple pie, cherry pie, and and then he's showing me a tooth. He must have had a sweet tooth. You know, I'm guessing this stuff. I've never <laughs> right. met this person before, right? right? Right, right. And, or sometimes they'll say things to me like there was one uh, gal that came in from the spirit world and her name was June and I heard June bug. I heard it. I didn't see it. And I said June bug and the guy just about 
fell off his chair. He said, that was my nickname for her. So I can hear, I can see, and I sometimes I'll, uh, I've been blinded for a moment. I've been deaf for a moment. And these, I was pricked in my finger because somebody was a diabetic. So all these things were evidence for the, my clients. I pay attention to everything that goes on, everything. I've smelled chocolate cake, and I've... Um, What's the other one? I've tasted, um, you know, I've tasted as well. I've tasted what uh, cancer, uh, cancer treatment tastes like. Or, My you know, goodness. I, I didn't even know what it was. Somebody said, oh, that's what that is, because their husband had gone through it. Uh-huh. So spirit will use any sense that they know you can pick up to get the message across that, yes, it's me. I'm the one with the tortoise shell glasses. I'm the one that had the chip tooth, you know, and that those are the kind of messages I do. Let's get the evidence. It's this person because I've never met them before. And then let's go to the message. Why are they here? Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. So um, sometimes we, especially if someone has recently transitioned, we will get, um, for example, for years without even knowing, when I was only 14, I was smelling my grandmother's she had a an odd sort of perfume. I was smelling her perfume randomly. Mm-hmm. And only when I started doing this work and came to understand about olfactory sense, sense mm-hmm. sensations like that, only then did I realize that she was around me and, and she had been giving me that as a sign of her survival. But but so we all, some of us will will just get these same impressions, but just not nearly as Profound, not as strong. I mean, they're not looking for for these uh, uh, signs that you're getting, but we do get them too. Are they coming yes. to us the same way through yes. through the? Oh, I, okay. Yes. And the thing is, if we recognize these subtle signs, then we realize how much spirit is trying to reach us. Yes. You know the shadows that are out of the corner of your eye, and you look, and there's nothing there, or you see sparkly yes. lights, or. Um, you see shadows on the floor. That's usually your animal spirit friends. You know, yes. all these things happen. You might feel, see a dime and think, where'd that come from? Yep. These are all environmental messages. Oh, people and birds. Oh, my goodness. You know, I see blue jays. It reminds me of my mother because she loved blue jays, yes. uh, you know, blue jays baseball. And, of course, her mother's going to use the blue jays as a sign that she's around. So we just have to really pay attention. I will say this, um, Roberta, I've got a YouTube channel, and I've put at least three clips on that said, um, if you look them up, Signs from Spirit, and it's a list of all the things to watch for to let you know that your loved ones are trying to reach out to you. Wow. Okay. Now, it's carolynmolnar.com, right? C-A-R-O-L-Y-N-M-O-L-N-A-R.com. Would you, are, people can get to your uh, your uh, YouTube channel from there? You have a link there? Um, you know, it's, there's various and sundry links throughout the website, but the easiest is just to uh, search my name, Carolyn Molnar YouTube. You'll find it. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's great. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, so someone wants to consult a medium are there are there any red flags that they should look at uh, or look for that make them obviously if they start telling you bad things about they're they're going to happen to people that i would just flee the room is there mm-hmm. anything else we should be concerned about when we're searching for a medium several things one is i would never recommend that you go see the the mediums or the psychics that are saying ten dollars because that's usually just to rope you in for more. Oh. Another, yeah. How, how yeah. do they get more out of you? They say you have to oh, come back. Oh, you've got a curse. You've got a curse. Oh, and you're kidding. They say for that? $2,500, I can clear the curse. Oh. It's got to do with bad money. Or, yes, you want your a loved one back in your life. I'll, I'll, I'll do something, but I'll need $500 in order. You know, it just goes on from there. I've known uh i've read about lawyers who've been fleeced for six figures including a a very expensive sports car yeah by some of these people drives me crazy because then people who are honest have a harder time you know just being and doing their work for sure Mm -hmm. so if if you go to a medium or a a psychic Mm -hmm. and they say you have a curse 
or your loved ones in trouble in the afterlife or anything like that and they that they can fix it for money you walk out of the room yes absolutely absolutely All right yeah it's a good tip uh, the other thing too is i always uh say get references you know there are other people around you that have had experiences with good mediums good psychics and that's a wonderful way to do it um Look at their website, you know, what's their testimonial page look like? You know, is there any kind of, do they even have a website? You know, oh, what have question. they done? Right, right, you right. Know? It's Everybody like, you does. Know, if, yeah. yeah. If you want somebody good, they, they're, you've got to do some research. Yeah. Okay, so if someone wants to be or is thinking about Gee, I really seem to think I have have. Well, I have to ask a question first, which I always ask mm-hmm. of mediums. Do you have this in your family? Because it seems to run in some families that people have this gift. Oh boy, do I ever! <laughs> okay, all right. I, that's the, yes. always everybody's answer. Tell us quickly about that. Then I want to go into how how you would ask people to get suggest people get started. But well, it's on both sides of the family. Okay. Uh, my mother, uh, my mother, as age sixteen, her parents used to have seances in the dining room. Oh, and, gee, okay. Yeah, and it was a medium that was uh, a medium for Prime Minister Mackenzie King. He was a major spiritualist, and she used to have, she was a trumpet medium, so she used to have a trumpet flying around the room with voices coming out of it. I know, I know, but she really did. Um, and my grandparents used to go to Lilydale. Uh, w- long before I even knew Lilydale existed. Uh, my father's side, um, my grandfather used to see a psychic weekly, not what I recommend, but he was very much into it. Yeah, and, uh, and my aunt on my father's side, his sister, is also quite psychic. I have three sisters, two of which myself and another are full-time um, really? mediums. So, yeah, wow. there's something something going on and you know i have to tell you my parents never thought of this as strange (laughs) because they were both um exposed in their lifetimes with this so i think that's why i chose this family so that i could just live my life and it it was normal it was just normal well that seems um i should just say everyone that seems to be a very common situation among people who have the gift It, it is often on both sides of the family or at least on one. So if you have relatives who seem to have psychic talents or abilities or gifts, you may well have them too. And many people who have them will have a childhood experience or two that are extraordinary. Now, I had one of the most extraordinary childhood experiences that I've ever heard of, and I'm as psychic as a post, but I have a related gift, which is that it turns out I'm a channel. Um, I'm a writing channel. I never wanted to be one, but that's just how it is. Um, so we all, don't you think many of us have these gifts we've, we've never really used of various uh, kinds? Yes, we do. We, we're all intuitive beings. We're all telepathic. It's just whether or not you know what to do with it and how to exercise it. And I have psychic development classes to introduce people to their intuitive side. I always recommend people to take the psychic development classes so that they're working with their guides which is love light and high energy before they um, start working with mediumship which is just spirit people yes and i've had a lot of success um i have had mediums who became professional and um there i've got a group that i'm working with now that i've worked with for years they just keep coming back because they love doing the work so yeah well, I, I strongly recommend, by the way, this this uh, developing your abilities uh, and and working to connect with your own guide. Um, it enriches your life more than I can say when you're in contact with your primary guide. This is a being who is well enough developed to have fi- usually, almost always, finished incarnating, and this being is probably someone you knew even before you ever came into um, maybe even any lifetime or from or you had lifetimes together or something. You have a history together. This is a loved one who has chosen to be your guide for your whole life. This person helped you plan this life This and, and, is, and loves you. I mean, to have somebody, I don't care whether there's anybody else in your life who loves you. You have somebody who loves you so much 
And to have a relationship with that person is such, such a gift. Don't you think that's true? It must be a miracle to be helping people to have that connection. Absolutely. You realize you're not alone. Oh, my oh, word. That's the greatest gift. You're just not alone. Not ever and not for a moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I used to think that my guide was coming and going. And, and finally, one day I said to him, you, you, you have to stay with me because I, I don't want you. To, he said, I'm always here. You just have to say, you know, say my name. Mm-hmm. And now then I realized, yes, he is always here, but he's trying not to be intrusive. He's not trying to be in my face about anything. But, yeah, are your guide is with you all the time. So yeah, you they're... help people to find mm-hmm. their guides. Yes, yes, through meditation. But remember, guides are only that. They guide. They don't tell. That's because right. Because they have to deal with free will. That is yep. a, a gift. So that's why they're not always going to be around unless you call on them, and then they can help you. In my case, what I've learned is that my guide is always there, but he doesn't make me aware of him unless I call for him. I mean, it's not like you have to come from a distance. Mm-mm. I think he's always there. But maybe not always. Um, well, he, he, maybe, he, maybe he does go far away and he just can appear whenever I want him to. But the point is, we are first in, our, in that guide's eternal life for our whole life here. They really, really want us to know them and to, and to ask for their help and they'll give it to us. So when you have that kind of a resource, it's kind of foolish not to try to make the most of it, don't you think? Absolutely, yes. They want to help they want you to succeed. I remember there are times when I was railing at them, so angry. Why won't I be able to? Uh, you were angry. Kind of, you're oh, my you're gosh, right. yes. Oh yes, I'm a Taurus. I, I had very little patience in, <laughs> the, in the beginning. And yes. you know what? They just tapped their foot and sit, crossed their arms, basically, and said, we'll wait for you. Just have what you need to have, and when you're done, we'll, we'll help you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> Oh, it's the truth, though. They but, they had so much patience for me. They still do. But I don't do that anymore because I realize where what they suggest is better than what I think I know. That's such an important point. Yes. Mm-hmm. They have they they are watching us. They know so much more than we do because they're back in in their vast eternal minds, whereas we aren't there. We're in our little uh, you know earth minds, and um, even if. You resist, and I have resisted on a, on occasion. I generally come around because I know he's right. I just, mm-hmm. you know, I, as you say, we can be bratty. That's part mm-hmm. of being human. <laughs> but mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. no, it's a beautiful thing. So if people are interested in that kind of class, they can go to carolynmolnar.com, and you'll you'll be there. You're there, and you have a uh, a way for them to contact you about it. Well, the best thing for them to do is to join the newsletter. That's the only place that I announce the classes because they are so popular. I, I'm not able to get to everybody. So, um, And the, the next announcement will probably be in December for a January start. Once I have the classes running, I close them because of the energy and the trust of the class because this yes. is a very uh, private kind of sometimes poignant um, experience and they want they they've gotten the students have gotten used to trusting who's in the group uh, to add somebody new to the group is yes it, it just break it the apart. energy would go off right exactly yes. mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. okay but so they they can just go to carolynmolnar.com and they can sign up for the newsletter yes and then they will they'll, they'll come right to their inbox yes exactly okay. yeah that's easy that's very easy okay that's great um, so, so, what about people who want to develop as mediums? You help with that as well, right? I do. As I said, uh, psychic development first, and then when uh, spirit tells me they're ready, um, then I'll, I'll invite them into the mediumship class. And uh, uh-huh. yeah, and I, I've, as I say, I've had a class for years, and you know, uh, several of them now are doing other things. One has just been an ordained spiritualist minister another one is an efficient uh, another one is a reiki practitioner so they they you they have their spiritual side and then they have their their practical side and it all goes together so beautifully oh isn't that wonderful that's yeah. great 
Mm-hmm. So, so yes, if you have any interest, everyone, just sign up for the newsletter because um, it, it, you don't have to do anything, but it's kind of nice to know you have options. I wish uh, – I have very few regrets. One of my big regrets is that I didn't try to meet Thomas years and years before he finally insisted that we, we, we meet because – they're always working with us. He was working in my mind. It's not like he'd been somewhere else doing something else. But um, for me, it has been such an enriching, enriching experience to be able to also know him openly. It's a whole new relationship with someone who has been with you your whole life. And um, so I recommend that pretty strongly. One question I get from people is, do you have to be near a medium who's doing a reading for you? Or can you be in a distance? Um, it, time and space means nothing to spirit. As a matter of fact, since the pandemic started, I've been online with, uh, you know, doing it through Zoom and on telephone. I remember, I have to tell you this story. Um, there's a fellow that used to see me in person, and he found out I was only doing it online. And he was really mad. He told his oh. wife, I am not, you know, I just, how can she do that to me? And she to said, you, you know what? To, to him personally, for heaven's yeah. sake. And she said, stop your grumbling. I'll pay for the reading. Just try it out. And so he did. And he's like, how do you know that? What? How did you know that? How, that how can you fun. do that? I'm not in front of you. And I said, it doesn't matter. All I need is your voice and your openness. And spirit will provide the rest. I said, it doesn't matter um, to them whether you're in front of me or you're in Timbuktu. I've read for people on cruise ships in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> They're moving. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I've asked this question of mediums, and some of them have actually said, you know, I prefer to read with someone who is, you know, a thousand miles, two thousand miles away, because if you're in the room, I'll look at you and I'm distracted by that. Whereas yeah. if you're at a distance, I've got to use your energy and that works much better, which I thought was fascinating. I think it's just that we're so human, that we are social <laughs> beings, and we think that the closer we're together, the stronger the connection. Mm, doesn't work that way. <laughs> what do you mainly want people to get from our conversation today? This is real. This, this is, is real? real. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, uh, it, it, it's quite a journey. If you're interested, be very, very patient with yourself. Um, and um, know that it is a wonderful way to help others. I mean, this is really why we're here, you know, is to progress our soul while on the planet. And how is that done? But through service, helping others. You know, to to see, um, I, I get emails saying, you know, I felt so much better after our session knowing my mother is okay. Yes. To yeah. me, that's like golden. You know, the oh, of, I, I, don't you love guilt, it when you, you know? know you've helped people? Mm-hmm. I, I can't tell you. I get emails like that a lot now and comments mm-hmm. on my blog and stuff. I can't mm-hmm. tell you how I, 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 I hold it in my heart. It's the most wonderful feeling to it's know the that you've helped. Gift. Yeah. And it's so important now, everyone. We're all worried about the energy of this planet. I mean, if you're older like me, you know that it hasn't always been so negative mm-hmm. where people are at each other's throats about mm-hmm. stupid things. Mm-hmm. We are told that uh, there's an, a process underway now to raise the vibration, the consciousness mm-hmm. vibration of this planet, literally in order to mm-hmm. save it from destruction, which is not yeah. far away. And that being the case, the most important thing you can do if you want to help the planet is to, for heaven's sake, convince yourself, convince yourself that your mind really is eternal, the minds of everyone you love really are eternal, and the best way to do that is by taking seriously the kind of work that Carolyn does and other good mediums because they can show you, demonstrate. I One of the reasons I know for sure it's all real is because I have also had some readings with, readings with some very good mediums and my my loved ones have shown me things that there's no way anyone could have known it. They were just between the two of us. So if they were able to show it to a medium, I know they're still alive. Mm-hmm. Give yourself the gift of knowing that. Not just about your loved ones, but about yourself, your eternal life, and the fact that the world can can heal itself once enough people are are raised out of the negativity of fear of death. That's the worst, worst 
as the root of all fears. So mm-hmm. you're doing God's work for sure, Carolyn, by helping well, people get you. past that. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I'm going to add another thing about all that's going on on the planet. This is a, a time of enlightenment for sure. And what is happening here is because we have more time for ourselves, we're actually becoming more self-aware Good. and more self-actualized if we're willing to take it. And that is enlightenment, and that's raising the consciousness of the planet. It starts with us. Of course it does. Oh, but what a great point. Thank you so much for that. Oh, you're welcome. Everyone, we've been talking today with Carolyn Molnar, who is a very good and very gifted medium. But I think even more importantly, she's thought about what she does, and she's thought about helping other people to better understand what she does. Um, Carolyn, please consider yourself hugged. We'll do this again. Thank you. I love this. Thank you, Roberta. <laughs> we do have fun. Carolyn's website is carolynmolnar.com. It'll be in the program notes so that you won't have to stop the car and, and write it down. But um, I urge you, if, the, if, if talking to a medium interests you, she's a very good choice for that. And meanwhile, everyone, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm really glad you could be with us. Hasn't this been fun? Please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began. You never will end. And when you really get what that means, it changes everything in your life for the better. Next week, our guest is going to be our host. I'm always nervous about doing this, although people tell me they like it when I do this. But there are, sometimes there are things I want you to know. And I don't have any expert who can help me share this information with you. This is one of those times. We've talked here often about the fact that your mind is inextricably part of the infinitely powerful and vast eternal mind that continuously manifests reality. Your mind is part of the only thing that's real, which is God. Far from being just a product of your brain, which is what the scientists tell us, your mind is the only part of you that's actually real, and it's eternal. And of all that you own, I don't care how rich you are, but all that you own, your mind is all that matters. It's you and it is forever. And you may be accepting that better by now. It's kind of used to stretch, but you may be used to more used to it by now. But one of the things that you may not realize is that you can do things in your life that affect your mind and harm your life tremendously, and you may not even realize you're doing those things. Because your mind is so powerful, so creative, and such a, has such an amazing capacity to learn and to grow, it also can be warped by things you do. We're only coming to understand this initially. I, what I want to do is give you an initial understanding, an initial awareness of what helps your mind what harms your mind, what's really going on with your mind, and how you can make the most of learning spiritually. And I'm not talking about anything like meditation or yoga or anything. I mean, there are things you can do in your mind, with your mind, without even changing your life that can make an enormous improvement, not just here but eternally for you. So next week we're going to be talking about the care and feeding of the only important part of your glorious and eternal life, your wonderful, powerful, beautiful, eternal mind. So I'm going to be trying very hard to make this work for you, so please do join us next week. And this week we've been talking with the prominent Canadian medium, Carolyn Molnar, who's been here for the third time. I I tend to choose people I've really enjoyed talking with in the past and invite them back when I can. Carolyn also has just written a book that's a helpful memoir for many people who are interested in learning more about mediumship. And it's got a great title. What? You're a medium? Carolyn has over 30 years of experience as a medium, and she works with people worldwide. She teaches classes classes on mediumship, on psychic development, and she leads workshops across Canada, which is where she lives, and at Lilydale, New York, which many people know all about Lilydale. As you may know, I've had trouble. I've had trouble believing in mediumship, but I find Carolyn to be a delightful and really enthusiastic and approachable medium and someone who really has the gift. And she's, as you've heard, she's humble too. Uh, She doesn't try to put anything over on anyone. I love the fact that she reaches out from her own heart to yours. If you're like me and you wonder about mediums or if you think you may have gifts or if you just want to talk with someone that you miss who's just transitioned ahead of you, 
Carolyn would be a very good choice. CarolynMolnar.com As you know, my nonfiction books are Liberating Jesus, My Thomas, The Fun of Dying, The Fun of Staying in Touch, The Fun of Growing Forever, The Fun of Living Together, and soon, this, well, probably next year now, The Fun of Loving Jesus, Embracing the Christianity that Jesus Taught. This book has been ready to publish for two years. It's Thomas who has held it up, but he says it's the time is soon. There's also, of course, The Fun of Meeting Jesus for Children, and all these books can you can order on Amazon.com. You can go in bookstores and order them. And the adult books are all available as audio books. And I read them. I, I actually enjoy it. I'm looking forward to doing this next one. If you want to talk with me about anything, just anything at all, one of, the, one of my books, something I've said here today, or anything at all, you can always reach me through the green contact block on robertagrimes.com. I answer every email. It takes a few days usually, but I do answer them all. So just make sure you give me your correct email address. I also, if people want me to do it, will sometimes talk to people if they feel that they need um, to ask questions directly. I'm happy to do that too. Past episodes of Seek Reality are available on webtalkradio.net, realrevolutionradio.com, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and a number of other stations, including those in the wonderful Dream Vision 7 radio family. And many people just get the Seek Reality app for free in the iTunes app store, and it comes the, the uh, new podcast will come to you every week automatically. If you enjoy our weekly conversations, here's another plug for my blog. Every Sunday, if you sign up at robertagrimes.com, it will come to you, or you can just go to, go to my website and read the latest blog post. Um, what we do on in my blog is work out a lot of the, the bigger issues that we just don't have time to do in the frame of a 50-minute a audio. So um, if you're inclined, come and join us. We have a lot of fun there. Meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy and make the most of this coming week in our one reality, one reality, knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being, and above all, you and most of all in the whole universe, you are infinitely loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything.